throughout this presentation, we plan on doing some interactive activities and we'll give you some time to actually put this into practice. And so if you happen to be joining us on a mobile phone or a telephone, if you could maybe grab a laptop or get to your desktop, um, you'll really be able to take advantage of the full functionality of this workshop. Um, so before I let Dr. Duong introduce herself, I just wanted to remind you this is the first of three part series on Google for Instructors. So every Thursday, starting this Thursday at noon Arizona time, we will have a continuation of this series the next three weeks. So Google Drive is today. We will be moving on to Google Docs, and then we will finish with Google Slides. So at any point, we will be recording, we will be posting these recordings, but also if you have any questions, we can follow up at the next session, All right? So I'm going to pass it along to our amazing guest speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Kirsty, and thank you so much to the team, um, to the TLC team. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with everyone. I'm super excited about what we're going to be talking about today and in the weeks to follow. Um, I, I found that uh, the Google Suite and all the apps that we have access to as faculty have been very beneficial to me as a, an educator. And so I'm super excited to be able to share and, um, and, and see what we can do and build upon uh, what our resources um, that we have access to here on campus. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Miley Duong. I am a graduate of ATSU. I graduated from our dental school in 2012, completed a residency program on campus. Um, and then uh, I, in, uh, in 2013, I had the opportunity to become full-time faculty here. I'm currently the associate director and associate professor of our special care clinic. So for those that don't know, we do have a dental clinic on campus in Mesa. Um, and so I help run our AEGD residency program and our special care program. And, uh, and one of the things that I'm really passionate about other than our students is our faculty. And I also am really passionate about technology and how it can really be a great tool for us as educators, for our students and our patients. And so a few years ago, I was able to team up with uh, Dr. Monica Ninad in ASDO and we started doing some sessions about Google because I started seeing our students using the Google Suite apps in the classroom and in clinic and in my mind, if my students are doing something in regards to their learning, I, as an educator, I should be responsible to know what they're using and how they're using it so that I might be able to maximize or take advantage of that too. So as I, you know, the more I taught our students in the classroom and in the clinic, I realized, hey, they're using this technology. I should be using it too. And once I started using it, I found it to help me better uh, and efficiently and effectively teach my, give me one second. I apologize. Um, I did not lock my door. One of the Zoom etiquettes is that you lock your door and apparently people walk around opening doors. Uh, so I apologize for that. But um, one of the things that I found is uh, I really wanna be able to effectively and efficiently teach our students. And, and so I took that passion and I actually wanted to empower our own faculty to be able to learn about all the resources we have, especially the Google Suite so that they may be able to use it in their in-classroom and in-clinic uh, teaching. So. I'm going to go ahead and quickly share my screen for my presentation. Uh, let's see here. Wonderful. So I've, I, you know, in addition to my, my dental degree, I also have a, a master's in public health that I got from um, ATSU as well. So I like to consider myself an ATSU cheerleader. I'm a, I have a big passion for our school and that's probably why I get so excited when I get to teach our students and, and hopefully, you know, um, uh, engage in your same, you know, in, in the same enthusiasm and passion for education that our faculty has as well. So today we're talking a little bit about Google Drive, and I know that there's quite a few people on here. I'm sure you have all heard about Google Drive, and um, I'm sure all of you to some extent have used Google Drive. Um, I, I envision our session together today as more of a foundation, building a foundation and making sure that we're all on the same page. So there may be things about Google Drive that, you know, I talk about that you already know, and hopefully there are things that you don't know because I'm a big believer in uh, uh, and I strive to always try to give everyone that I 
interact with at least one pearl of wisdom whenever I provide a, a lecture or a presentation. So hopefully you get one, at least one pearl of wisdom from today's lecture um, or presentation. But for many of you guys, um, I'm hoping that some of the things that we talk about can fill in some of the holes that you may have. We're probably, you know, going to start at the ground zero basic level, um, just so that we all understand and have the same language and understanding of, um, of, of Google and Google Drive. Um, Google Drive to me is a digital filing cabinet. So I think about, you know, the, those file, those, those, you know, those traditional metal filing cabinets and there's drawers and inside each drawer you have folders. Um, inside those folders you can put paperwork and you can organize it. So Google Drive in essence is that. That's what I picture when I think of Google Drive. And it's just digital. It's in the cloud. Um, and it can have folders and inside each folder you can have subfolders and so on. And it allows you to organize a lot of the files and especially not just in the last, you know, six to eight months because we, our world has gone so much more digital. But even before, um, I found that, you know, we were utilizing a lot of digital stuff because again, we were trying to uh, reduce paper. We were trying to make it easier for accessing materials for our students. And so um, Google Drive has been such a great tool in all of those goals, um, accessibility, uh, and, uh, and then also with just staying organized. And so um, when I think of Google Drive, I think of it as a filing cabinet. And I hope that you can use that as an analogy because even though it is digital, you do want to try to stay organized when you're working within Google Drive. Google Drive also has a what's called a synchronization capability. It allows you to sync across all um, across uh, multiple devices. And so the great thing about it being digital and it being able to synchronize is everything is stored in the cloud in cyberspace. And because of that, as long as you have internet access, you can essentially access any of your files that you have in Google Drive from any device that has Wi-Fi access. Um, one of those things is really great because I might have something in the Google Drive and then um, I use my, you know, for example, I'm using my work computer and I put something in the drive and I go home, I can access that from my home computer if I need to, or if I have the appropriate apps on my phone or my iPad or my tablet, I can also access it anytime, anywhere, as long as I have internet access. And that's really it makes things more convenient. Um, the other thing I like about the synchronization is before Google Drive, I would, there's two things that I found very inefficient with my ability to uh, communicate and work with other faculty and students. And one example would be, I would have a PowerPoint presentation that I'm working with two other people. Without Google Drive, I would have to rely on either making changes to a PowerPoint and then sending it over to David he would make some changes, he'd send it back to me, but maybe in the meantime, I made some more changes. And now we have multiple versions of PowerPoint that we're sending back and forth through email. Or maybe it's, I make one, uh, you know, I, I use a USB drive or a jump drive, you know, the thumb drive that, you know, we've, we've had in the past. And so you might have one version of it on your work computer, another version of it on your home computer, and you don't know which version is the newer version. There's, you know, so there's a lot of that for me, uh, confusion and not knowing which version is the most recent version. And so um, because of Google Drive's ability for it to be stored in the cloud, you have a history of the different versions, but you always have the most recent version available to you. And in real time, anytime you access that, you will have the most recent version as well as any changes you make to it gets automatically saved. Um, and then if I, you know, I'm working on it on my end and then an hour later, David Lopez works on it, I can see his changes and it's not, he has a version and I have a version, we're working on the same version. So that has been very beneficial um, in decreasing confusion, but also increasing efficiency. Google Drive also has this ability to share, right? So we can share one document or one version of something and everyone is working on it. The, the great thing about this that, you know, an example of this is I've taught in classes where I put my students in groups and I'll say, okay, um, I need your group of five to work on, you know, to create a PowerPoint presentation on patients who have Down syndrome. 
What I've noticed is that what they'll do is they'll sit together on a table and they'll open up Google Drive, Google um, Sheets or Google Slides or whatnot. They'll all be working on the same presentation at the same time. They're talking about it, they're working on it, they can see it on their, uh, their, uh, their laptops, but they're sharing and working on one document as opposed to five people working on five different versions and then having to figure out, having one person look at all of the changes and compiling it into one version. So the ability to share documents has been very useful in collaborating with people. Um, sharing has also been great because sometimes with email, you are limited to how much or how big files can be. So with Google Drive, you can upload larger files and be able to share that with different people. So I might own and or I might have a, a PDF and I can share that with Kirsty or David or Holly or whatnot. Um, and they can have access to it and any changes I make to it because I've shared it with them, they can see it. Uh, Google Drive also comes with a lot of different um, apps or programs. And um, if you're familiar, which I assume everyone is very familiar with um, Microsoft Office Suite. So Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft um, Excel, all of those. Um, if you're familiar with the Microsoft Suite, as you become more familiar with the Google Suite apps, they're very similar. Um, you know, Google Docs is equivalent to Microsoft Word. Uh, Google Slides is equivalent to Microsoft PowerPoint. So um, Transitioning from one to the other may not be a very large learning curve um, because a lot of the features are still the same. It's just trying to figure out where different things are. So like, you know, um, different icons or different uh, movements, like um, being able to change the border on the Word document might be in a different menu bar or whatnot. So um, it is very similar if you're familiar with Office Suite. And uh, let, next week we'll be going over Google Docs and the following week after that we'll be going over Google Slides. And so hopefully you'll start to you, you know, see the similar features if you are or have been a Microsoft Office user. Um, and you know, again, it goes back to the sharing capability because when you're using Google Drive, Docs, Slides, or any of the other um, Google apps, um, because you can share it with other people, it's it's a great it, it really um it's the next level up from microsoft i know microsoft has the OneDrive and they have something very similar but i found that google just the power and the ability is a lot uh, more beneficial and efficient for me as a faculty member um if you're a commercial commercial user you have 15 gigs of free space in your drive being part of atsu i don't really know what the limit is but I haven't asked because I don't want to be given a limit. So I know um, David and Holly who are on the line, they probably know if there's a limit, but I don't want to know because I like thinking that I have unlimited space on my Google Drive so I can keep putting more and more things. Um, I will take this opportunity to let everyone know. I've been part of the ATSU family for about 12 years now. So I've collected a lot of things in my Google Drive. And um, when we start to do the uh, the hands-on demo, you'll see that I do have a lot. And I hope that you will give me, you know, be gracious and um, and humor me when I say, you know, even the, you know, even the most uh, tech savvy digital filing cabinet can be messy as well as um, as the traditional digital or the traditional filing cabinet. So, um, so uh, please keep that in mind, but we'll try to be as organized and straightforward as possible when we're doing the demo for you. Um, Again, so these are kind of like the five major things that I love about Google Drive and um, and the Google Suite apps stuff. So um, hopefully you will come to um, know and use these and hopefully they will benefit you. Um, so we talked about like sharing documents. Um, so Google Drive allows you to store files and that's how you can share those files with people. Um, in order to store the files, you have to upload. So you can upload different files. Um, and then it also, because you can share, you have the ability to collaborate with people and work on things together, either in real time or in, um, in asynchronous ways. Um, and then the other great thing about Google Drive or the Google Suite is because of the other apps like Docs, slides, forms, sheets, you can create documents as well. So it's kind of like an all in one package that, you know, anything that I've needed to use for education, I have found that I could use the Google Suite apps. Um, 
We've already talked a little bit about some of these features, but I just want to highlight accessibility. Um, that's one of the great features about Google Drive because you can access it from technically anywhere you have Wi-Fi connection. Um, I've been able to access my Google Drive when I'm overseas because I'm still working even when I'm traveling. I'm sure many of you guys are the same way. Um, you also own and control your data. So um, your, the, the information that you put in your drive, you own that information and you can control how that information is um, um, accessed by other people. So I might share a document with uh, David, but I might say he can only look at it. Or I might say, you know what, he can look at it and make changes. Um, and so, or I can say, you know, David can only see this document for one week and then afterwards he has no more access to it. So you do have the ability to control the data that you own. Your work is always backed up because it's in the cloud. And there's also that revision history that I talked about. So I might be working on something today and I was like, you know what, I don't like what I did. I wanna go back to an older version of it. And there's revision history where you can go back to different versions of the files you're working on. Google Drive also has a search engine so you can easily search for things. Once we go into my, once I give you a peek into my drive, you'll see that I have a lot in there and I utilize a search feature a lot or the search engine a lot to find a lot of different files. Um, you can store and view over 30 different types of files. Uh, and so I know many of us are familiar with um, doc files, um, PPT, PDFs, um, JPEGs, but there are so many different files out there and Google Drive can store most any file. And then within Google Drive, you can print, download, and export certain uh, all any any and all files that you have stored in Drive. Things to note as we proceed to the hands-on part of this uh, session, because I don't want to spend too much time talking about Google Drive. I actually I'm a hands-on person. And I want to jump right in. Um, there is a Google Suite for desktop. Um, it's a more advanced feature. We're not going to talk about it today, but I do want you to be familiar with that because with the Google Suite for desktop, you have an option to work offline. So for many of my advanced users that are on our um, session today, if you're interested in something like that, that might be something that you're, you know, you would want to look into, especially if you're traveling or you might be going somewhere where you might not have Wi-Fi access. You can access a lot of your Google stuff by utilizing the desktop feature. Um, so look into that if you're interested. Um, Google Suite for mobile devices require additional apps to um, be able to use. So if you're, you know, that's why earlier Kirsty had asked, like, if you want to be active in today's hands-on activities, I ask that you are logged in using your laptop or your desktop, because that's how we'll be able to maximize your experience today. If you're logging in through your iPad or your phone or a tablet, um, it requires a lot of other different apps downloaded in order for you to do some of the things that we want to do today. But if you're using your desktop or or a laptop, you should be able to do everything that we're going to go through today um, on those devices. Um, and so any questions so far? I have not been monitoring the chat, but let me just quickly go through that. I think we're good. Um, I'm also the type of educator that um, I don't like to wait until the very end to answer questions. I don't mind being interrupted. So if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt at any time. I'd rather talk about something while we're in the moment because my mind is on there and your attention, I have your attention on it. Whereas if you wait till the end, you might forget your question and I might not be in the moment to answer. So please feel free to interrupt or um, throw uh, a comment into the chat as we move along. Okay, so how today is going to work is for the next few minutes, I'm going to kind of demonstrate eight different things or I've identified eight tasks that I would like to make sure we teach you or that you have a good understanding of how to do. Once I go over how to do those eight things, they're more like eight and some minor things. So maybe there's like 10, but um, there's uh, some major things that I want to make sure everyone knows how to do because it'll give you the basic foundation to hit the ground running it, uh, with, with Google Drive. After we do that, we're going to go ahead and split everyone up into um, different breakout rooms. So you'll have a, a facilitator in those rooms and you'll have actually 10 different tasks or assignments that uh, activities that I want you guys to do on your own, on your end, on your laptop. That way, I'm a big believer in um, applying your skills. And so I can talk all day long, but if you're not doing it with your hands and actually applying it, it, it doesn't always help with, you know, um, tra transferring short, you know, sh from short term memory to long term memory. So I'll go over and, uh, and demonstrate the things that I am hoping you 
either already know or will learn by the end of today's session. And then we'll break out into breakout sessions. That way we'll be in smaller groups and you'll have um, a facilitator that can help you troubleshoot anything that you might be having issues with on your end. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of my, oh, let me just quickly go through what I'm gonna go over. So first I'm gonna just uh, demo how to even access your Google Drive. And then um, we're going to talk about creating folders, subfolders. I'm going to kind of give a brief um, uh, overlook of uh, the dashboard or all the different things once you're in Google Drive. So you kind of get an idea of the layout of where everything is and are and the icons, um, basic controls and things like that. We'll talk a little bit about sharing folders and files, um, how to upload files. Um, and then I, if we have time, sometimes I get a little optimistic about the goals I have for different sessions, but um, I would like to uh, go over some ways on how to share files. Um, with people. So you can share files via email, you can share files directly from within Google Drive. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about uploading documents. And if we have time, we'll go over how to convert existing documents. So um, one of the things that I found is oftentimes I create something in Microsoft Word um, on my computer, and then I'll upload it to my drive. But well, once it's in Drive, I can't edit a Microsoft Word document. So I have to convert it from a Microsoft Word document to a Google Doc file. Once it's converted to a Google Doc file, then once I share it with Kirsty or David or Holly or anyone, they can then edit if they need to or if I need to edit. Um, so that's something, you know, an important thing to note that within Google Drive, you can't edit files that are made in different programs such as Microsoft. PowerPoint or Microsoft Word. You have to actually convert it to the Google version of that, you know, the similar version, and then be able to edit through there. Okay, cool. Um, let me exit through um, out of my Google Slides real quick, and we're going to go into my Google Drive. Um, so actually, how you get to your Google Drive is, and forgive me, <laughs> I have a lot of tabs. Actually, you know what we'll do is we'll just take this out and I will close that so you feel a little bit better about my screen. Hey, Miley, we have a question in the chat. Yes. Somebody's asking, actually it's Jim, he's asking if he's had files shared with him in the past, he'd like to clean up his Google Drive. Can he delete those files without having them permanently deleted from the Google Drive? So if you, if you don't own the file, when you delete it, it deletes from your Google Drive, but it does not delete from the owner's drive. Um, but once you delete it from your drive, you don't have it in your drive anymore. And I think I saw something from Google Drive saying that once you delete something after 30 days, it'll be permanently deleted. So once you delete it, it's gonna go into your trash. And if you, the, the next day or within 30 days, you're like, oh, I actually want it back. You can find it in your trash, but Google Drive is automatically um, permanently deleting things that are 30 days or more in your trash. Um, so <laughs> yes, mass deletes coming soon, but yes. So if you don't own it, um, you can delete it from yours and it won't delete from the owners. Um, and then you do have 30 days to recover it if you'd like, but if not, then it's just permanently deleted from your drive. If it's something you own, same thing applies. It'll go into your trash for 30 days and then permanently delete. I hope that answers your question. Uh, okay, cool. So inside, so it, um, I'm gonna ask that, you know, you, you need to know how to log into your ATSU email. And then once you're in your ATSU email, um, in the upper right corner, you'll see these, um, these uh, the, the dots. There are nine dots up here. When you hover over the dots, you'll see Google Apps. So when you click on it, there should be an icon for Drive. You may need to scroll if it's not something you use a lot, um, but I generally use Drive every single day of my life. So it's usually at the top. And so um, I'll open up Drive and it'll open up in a different, I, I set my internet settings to open in a different tab. Yours might just open up in the same tab or whatnot, but um, mine opens up in a new tab. And let's see, I gotta minimize my screen real quick. So I don't have access to my chat or any visuals, so I can't see anybody raising their hand or in the chat. So I'm just gonna rely on our TLC team to let me know if I need to stop or pause. Uh, Miley, we're currently seeing your calendar. Oh, you are? Mm. Okay, hold on. I'm just sharing my entire desktop, you good? Perfect. 
Awesome. Thank you. So in the drive, um, here is my drive. And um, I like to let me just kind of go over where things are kind of. On the left side panel, you'll see a menu. Um, priority is something new. It's an advanced feature in Google. We are not gonna go over it today. Um, my drive is where we're going, we as um, our, you know, we as a team here today in our session, we're gonna live primarily in my drive. There's a feature called shared drives as well, which is really great. Again, advanced feature, not something we're going to talk about today. Um, and then there's other icons on here that's pretty self-explanatory. Again, we're going to live in my drive for today. And inside my drive, um, this is where all, you know, this is your digital filing cabinet. In my digital filing cabinet, you'll see that I have a lot of folders. These are all folders. I can view it like tiles or over here up in the upper right corner, I can click on this and it'll be listed. Um, it'll change the way I see my digital filing cabinet into a list of my folders followed by random files that I've uploaded in my drive but have not organized into folders. And so um, these are the folders that I have in my drive. When I, you know, um, there's going to be, as you work in your drive, you'll start to see um, what I like to call kind of like an address or a map of where I'm at. And so when I click on, let's say for example, ADA social media, and I go into that folder by double clicking, I'll see that ADA social media pops up right here and it tells me that this folder is within my drive. Um, and so it's kind of like a map, just so you, still, you know, as you go, you know, as you build your drive, let me see if I can, um, I go into my AGD folder and then I have more subfolders. So you'll start to see a map of where I am in my drive. So just to give you a heads up, this bar right here kind of is, is a map for you. Um, but I'm gonna go back into my drive and one of the things that I'd like you to also know is up here in the upper left corner, there's this um, icon for new. You can click on new and you can create new things. So in this case, I'm gonna click new folder. And this is what you guys are going to be doing, but I'm gonna kind of walk through everything. I would like everyone inside your drive to create a new folder. You're gonna name it um, TLC series. So I have that folder and it automatically highlights. I'm gonna double click on the folder to go into that folder. Again, see, I'm in my drive. I'm in the TLC series folder. Inside the TLC series folder, I'm gonna create a subfolder. So I'm gonna click new folder again. And this one, I'm gonna type Google Drive. I think that's what I put. So we're gonna create Google Drive. And so now I have a subfolder. And if I double click on it to go into that folder, now I can see that my map shows me I'm in Google Drive, which is inside TLC series, which is inside my drive. Um, the other thing is, so that's how you can organize your files um, by creating folders and subfolders and then putting and uploading different files into whichever folders. I'm gonna go back into that TLC series folder and I'm gonna double click. Um, the next thing I wanna do, or I wanna show you guys is sharing folders. So I'm gonna go into, um, I'm, I can, there's usually these drop down arrows or triangles. I click on this drop down and it gives me another menu of things. And so open, most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Um, what I'd like to take, turn your attention to is this icon that says share, because my intention for this next thing is to share this folder. So I'm gonna click share and it brings up a new window. And in this window, I'm gonna share this folder with David Lopez. And as I start to type names, because we're in the ATSU system or the ATSU network, um, people will start to just pop up. So or populate. So I'm gonna click David Lopez because that's who I want to share this with. Um, next to his name, there's this option to determine, do I want him to have access? This is where the control comes in. You can control whether David edits or views. If I select edit, he can organize, which means he can move things around. He can add things to the folder. He can edit any files in the folder. If I select viewer, it means he can open up my folder and look what's inside, but he can't move things around or change anything inside the folder. He just has access to look at it. I'm going to keep him as an editor and I have the option to say a message to him or, or not. And then you do, you automatically or default um, have this to notify, I keep it that way, but I can't think of a reason why I wouldn't want to notify somebody, but there's always that option. You might not want to notify people, but that's automatically on. And then I click send and David on his end will get an email 
that I shared a folder with him and he will, um, when he goes to shared with me, he'll also see that folder shared with him. But that's how we can share things with people. Um, I'm gonna go back to the share. I'm gonna go back into share. And I do want to bring this, um, the, your attention to this other way of sharing with people. Sometimes you don't know, you don't have specific people that you wanna share. Maybe you just wanna um, have a link where anybody who has access to the link, they can access that folder. And so down here, you will see that there's a link that you can get so that every time you share that link with people, they can access that folder. Um, you can control features about that link. Right now, it's automatically set so that um, anybody who um, has a link, it, hold on, restriction only people added can open with this link and then change link to ATSC. So right now, if I select, if I keep it at like this, only the people added will get this link. But if I change the link to ATSU, it means anyone in the ATSU network, if they have this link, they can access it. That means like, let's say for example, I send it to my mom who's not in the ATSU network. Even though she has the link, she still can't access it because she's not in the ATSU network. Um, I can change it to anyone with the link. And then if I change that, that means if I send it to my mom, even, because, even though she's not in the ATSU network, she can still see it. So if you don't really have specific people that you wanna share things and you just wanna be able to have it open and available to those who have access to the link, you can choose to either restrict to ATSU or share it to anyone who has the link. Again, you have that option to kind of change it viewer or editor. Okay, so we talked about sharing. Um, Let's talk about inserting Google Drive folders or files when you wanna share with email. So now that I have this, folder, this TLC folder, let's say instead of doing and sharing within Google Drive, I want to share it through an email. So if I go into my email, I can go to compose. And let's say, for example, I want to share it again with David, I would type his email in and then I would say sharing the folder as my subject line. And down here um, in the email feature, there are different icons. If you click on this uh, file use, or this icon for the drive, it pulls up a window and now I can navigate to that folder. You, you know, usually it's kind of based on recent. So you can see my TLC series folder is right at the top. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click insert. And now you'll see that that folder is now inserted into this email. And now when I send it to David, he can click on this folder and be able to access that folder because of the email I sent him. And then I can send it to him. Um, the other, so that's how you can either share using, you know, directly within Google Drive by using the share icon here um, by directly sending them or sharing it through Google Drive. You can get a link. Same thing. Let's say, for example, um, I want to get this link and I want to send it via email. I can just copy that link. And now when I go back to my email, David's going to get like 10 emails from me today. Um, I can send the link, sending link. And now I can paste that link into this. And then once I send it, he can also click on that link as well. So there's a lot of different ways to share files. I want you to be able to know that there are multiple ways. Some ways are gonna be more comfortable for you than others, but you should be familiar with all of those. Um, the next thing is, uh, you know, the next thing that I find many people will ask me about is, People will send us stuff and how you save it into your Google Drive. So um, an example of that is, um, this is a real world example. I did a CE class yesterday and um, they sent me a CE certificate. They sent me a PDF. I like to um, collect all of my CE certificates in a specific folder in my drive so that when it comes time for my licensure renewal, I can just I have all of my CE certificates and I can just print them all out and send them into the state board. And so every time I do a CE class, they'll send me this PDF. When you hover over the PDF, you'll see this icon that says add to drive. I'll click on add to drive and it'll give me the option to organize. I'm going to click organize and then I'm going to navigate to the folder that I have that houses all of my CE certificates. I know that I call it um, dental license docs. Inside my dental license docs, I have a folder called CE certificates. Inside CE certificates, I have a year. So I collect it per, you know, I organize my CE certificates by year. So 2020, and then once I'm where I want to put that PDF, um, I click move here. And now it's been moved into my folder or that subfolder. 
I'm seeing some chat, so I just want to make sure there's nothing else that I um, is Google Drive HIPAA compliant to share store patient pictures. Um, you know, I honestly don't know, and I don't want to say the wrong answer, but I will write that question down and try to get an answer for you unless someone on the call knows anyone in the TLC team knows. Um, ATC has an option in the chat. With Google. Um, can you change the name of a file when you are saving it to the drive? When you are saving it, just like I just saved it, you can't change the name of it while you're um, saving it. But for example, now that I saved it, now I can go into my drive. Uh, I'm gonna navigate to where that file was. So um, it's in my dental license docs, um, inside CE certificates in 2020. Um, that certificate was, I think, this one. So then when you right click on the file, you can then go to rename and then you can rename the file like that. I hope that answers your question. Okay, awesome. Um, great. Okay, so let me look at the next thing because I, I apologize, I'm a little behind schedule. I'm um, saving files from email to Google Drive. We just did that. Um, and then uploading existing documents. And so for example, I'm gonna go back into my TLC folder, uh, which is right here. Um, and uploading things straight to Google Drive is fairly easy. There's multiple ways to do it. One way is you can go new and then you can do file upload. When you click file upload, you just navigate to what you wanna upload. So for me, I'm gonna upload this Word document. I click on the Word document and I click open and you'll see that it's uploading and then it'll show up. Another way to upload is you can, you know, if you see it on your screen, you can click and drag it and then you can drop it in and then it'll upload. So that's how you can upload pick, um, any file that you want. And then the last thing that I hope that we can get to is converting existing documents into editable format. So for example, I just uploaded a Word document I want to be able to edit because when I double click on this, it opens up like a preview. It doesn't allow me to change this. So what I would do is I would go open with, and then I would go Google Docs. It'll open in Google Docs. It'll convert that Word document into a Google Docs document. Same title, same data that's in there. And now I have the ability to edit as I see appropriate. And again, it automatically saves. So you don't always have to go file, save, file, save. Um, your Google Drive will automatically save um, in, you know, as you're working. Um, awesome. While you're, hold on, does it remain HIPAA? Again, with the HIPAA stuff, I'm not really sure. I'm, ask, I'm gonna ask our TLC team to write those questions down so we can find an answer for them. But when you're viewing your drive with all the folders and such, I noticed tabs like, Share docs just above the folders. Hey, Miley, it's already been answered the HIPAA okay. compliancy. It cool. was answered by Tim Johnson. And yes, it is HIPAA compliant. It's signed with BAA with Google. Awesome. I'm not sure Dr. Wolt's question. Um, when you were <clears throat> in your drive, uh -huh. there were tabs right above your organized folders, like go back to your home, home, my drive. Oh, I swear I saw some tabs that were up there. And I'm like, where did those come from? Oh, when you see it again, let me know. Okay, I will. Thanks. Um, Hal asked, do you find that format changes are problematic when you upload Office docs? Do you mean like um, the format, like um, margins and things like that, Hal? Um, I find that the tabs sometimes are problems and sometimes um, when I have um, a list that are numbered that come becomes yep. a problem. So I, um, do you have yeah. I have noticed that. Um, and so that's why sometimes when I know that it's um, a document that I will be sharing and asking other people to collaborate with, I'll just create I'll just start the creation within Google Docs from the very beginning instead of starting a word uploading the Word document and then converting it to Google Docs. I usually will use Microsoft Word when I don't have online access or when I know that it's just my 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 project and I'm not gonna be collaborating with others. But when I know I'll be collaborating with others and that I'll eventually need to do Docs, I'll just start from the very beginning in Docs so that 
the formatting doesn't change. And that happens across all apps, not just Word Docs or Office or uh, Google Docs and um, Microsoft Word. Um, that happens when you convert PowerPoint to PDF, PDF back to PowerPoint, PDF back to Word. Um, a lot of those conversions tend to have those same problems. Um, formatting, formatting problems are less when going from Google Docs to Word instead of the other way around. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Thanks, Dr. Cottom. I would just say like, um, for me, I, I don't like problems. And so when I um, when I work on something, I tend to just stick with that. So I'll, oftentimes, like I said, if I know I'm gonna be utilizing the sharing feature and I'm gonna eventually have to use Google Docs, I'll just create the project or start the project already in Docs so I don't have to convert from Word to Docs and avoid the whole thing. Um, um, Miley, yes. This is this is Wayne. I was, I was wondering, you may be already going over this, but that document that you just created and then showed how you'd make it into an editable format. So one thing I learned, and maybe you can comment on this, is that is now shows docx. If you close this, um, uh, it will save the document, but it will it will it will keep it. So if you go ahead and close it, we could see on your drive that it saves it as a as a as a word doc. Yes. So it's the last word. step that I have found to because that started happening about a couple months ago, um, I never looked into it. But the workaround that I found for that. Sorry, I'm trying to get back to my TLC's folder so you guys can see. So it's still a word document. The workaround that is um, I go to file and I save right. it. As a yeah, save it as a Google Doc and then. And then it's a Google Doc that anyone can access. And, and, and then I usually delete that Word Doc. Yep, that's unless, what I do too. Unless I want the Word Doc there. But there's a difference between making it editable and editing it and closing it. It's kind of cool because those edits stay in that Word Doc. You've actually edited and you've edited that Word Doc, but it but it doesn't save it as a Google Doc. And, it's, and the two things are different. It took me a little while to realize that. But I found that um, uh, once you save it as a Google Doc, then it's just open for whoever you want to collaborate with. It. Correct. Thank you so much for bringing that point up. And Dr. Nina had said the same thing. Like you end up with two versions and so you can delete the version. That's why like if you notice in my drive, like I don't like to delete things. So like I have old, I have a folder that's called old and I put all of my old stuff in there so I don't lose it because I'm a hoarder. But um, you do end up with, uh, you can end up with multiple files. So see, I now have a Word document and a Google um, doc. So you, you know, you can go in here and then right click and go remove and it'll go into your trash. But the, um, one of the things that I found is in the last few months, it used to be that um, when you can, you know, you, you open it up in Google Docs, it would then automatically save it as a Google Doc and you wouldn't have to do that last step. But now I found that you actually have to go in there and go file and save as Google Doc. And then for hey, that, yes? you actually don't, you can actually keep the Microsoft Word and they can edit your Word document as well and save it as well. Um, I think that transaction happened a couple months ago and that's why we're having this duality of having both a doc and a Word document. But you can keep it as a Word document and two people can work on it collaborative through Google Drive. Yeah. And that it just keeps it as a Word doc, right? That is correct. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why Dr. Cottom just said like, when I made those edits, it's still, it, the edits showed up on that Word file when I opened it up again. Um, so I'll show you like, I made the same change. I, I wrote that sentence in and it still saved as a Word doc. Um, but so you can still, so they- uh, So if I were to edit on that as well, it would still save as a Word doc for you. And it still, so it, it, it's, it's all depending on what you want. If you want it as a Word, if you want it as a doc, yeah. either way. I think it's supposed to make life easier, but it just makes life a little bit more confusing, but that's okay. We'll work through it. Thank you, David. All right. Let do we have time to spend a few minutes doing hands on? Should we break out in groups and try to do it on our own? Yeah, we can spend about 10 minutes if you want. Awesome. Does that work? Yeah, let's go ahead. And if there are no questions, let's go ahead and go into uh, breakout rooms and try to go through uh, the tasks and just practice sharing, practice creating folders and subfolders, practice renaming things, practice uploading. Uh, if I share a document by email, will that person's edit change my document? Correct. David answered that question. Awesome. Cool. All right. So I'm going to move everyone into their groups.
Um, and then we will return back um, for a few closing comments. Hello. OK, awesome. Um, how did everyone do? How do you guys feel? What questions do you have? We had a really good question in our group about when you delete a Google Drive document or folder, what the person you shared it with sees um, and they do not have access to it. it. They just get an error message that tells them that the document is now either in the trash or has been deleted. So they'll be able to see the title, but won't be able to see anything else. Oh, that's a really good question. Thank you. Yeah. So that's why like ownership in Google Drive is really, really important. If there is a document that you do want to make sure you keep, I usually will download it. Um, either onto my computer, my local drive, um, or I might download it and then re-upload it onto my drive so that I now own a copy of it. But oftentimes when someone's sharing it with you, um, they still retain the ownership rights. And then you, you know, so if you, if they decide to delete it, you no longer have access to it. Um, that's why, like, for example, sometimes um, people will share, like, a lot of my CE certificates with me or little different documents. Um, if it's not attached to an email that I can organize into my drive and it's shared with me, I'll download it and then re-upload it so I own the file. So ownership and understanding ownership is really important when it comes to the Google Drive. What happens when people leave? Um, I may have to defer to someone else on that, but from what, I, I mean, I think I know the answer. I mean, you lose all your stuff on your drive, but maybe someone else um, from our team knows an answer. I guess what I mean is if someone leaves that owns the document that you're sharing or the drive folder that you're sharing, does that go away? I know they'll lose access to it, but will we lose access to it? Um, so I think um, I might need some help, but that's why shared drives is so important because in shared drives, anything that is in that shared drive, um, if I decide to leave ATSU and go somewhere else, I, you know, I no longer have access to my ATSU stuff or it gets deleted because I'm no longer part of the ATSU family. So anything that I've shared with you gets deleted because it goes away with me when I'm gone. But if I put anything in the shared drives, um, it stays there even if I leave ATSU. Um, oh, Quincy says you reassign ownership of the file before the owner leaves. So that's a much easier answer. Um, but you, you know, my thing is I have thousands of, of files. I might not be able to reassign, reassign everyone, but that might be one of the reasons why like in our clinic, we use a lot of shared drives. And so um, everything related to my sedation, um, I put in the sedation shared drive that everyone has access to if and when I leave, um, everyone will still have that drive. I just no longer am part of it. Tim has the answer. Oh. Tim, yeah, I just mentioned that ATSU also can transfer ownership for employees to somebody requested by their supervisor as well. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so very much, everyone, for your um, participation today. I hope that it helped fill in something or gave you some pearl of wisdom. Um, you know, th this is a interactive session, so I appreciate everyone's participation, and I hope that you will come back next week for us uh, when we talk about Google Docs and uh, the following week when we talk about Google Slides. Thank you very much, everyone, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, oh, yes, please provide feedback because it does help us um, serve you better, and we do we want to make sure that we meet your needs and, and help you be as successful as possible. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.